Hey guys, can you hear me? Yeah. Good. Volume is good. Yeah. Great to see all of you. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, it is recording our session today. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. And that way, if somebody missed it, they will be able to go back and look at it. Okay. So if you, and hopefully we'll have time at the very end and you can make some comments, ask some questions, things like that. Great to see you all. You look wonderful. Okay, the trip I did was in January of 2010. So that was 10 years ago. But it was a great trip, a wonderful time. And I wanted to share some of the pictures and some of the places that I went. So I'm going to um, share my screen and open up Google Earth. And you can see this is pretty much the United States. It's a, um, Mike used it when he did his trip to Cayman Islands and it was intriguing to watch. So I figured you would enjoy um, if I did it again using this method. So I'm going to begin the presentation. And there we are at the Richmond International Airport. So our plan was to fly from Richmond to Sacramento, California. We were visiting friends that lived in Clear Lake, California. Sacramento is the capital of California and that was the closest city to them. After we visited with them for a number of days, we actually drove to Reno, Nevada. They have a really nice RV, which I have a picture of that in the presentation as well. So you'll be able to see that and it was, um, it was a great time. Uh, once we got there, we did some excursions to the wine country, San Francisco, and of course to Reno and um, Lake Tahoe. So our trip began flying from Richmond, Virginia, all the way across the United States to Sacramento International uh -huh. Airport. And as I said, that is the capital of um, California. Nice airport. And California is a beautiful state. If you've never been, it's a lot of open countryside. And it's uh, got so many places you could visit. You could spend a lot of time there and still not see everything. So the next... Um, little part of the trip was them picking us up at the airport. It took about an hour and a half, I would say, to get from Sacramento Airport to Clear Lake. And this is the town of Clear Lake. And the lake is right over here, this green section. And it's a lot bigger than it looks, but I wanted to focus in on their home first. So while there, I took a lot of pictures. This was their backyard. Beautiful spot with a swimming pool, nice view of the lake. And this was the host, um, and this is their boat. We spent some time out on the lake uh, for a couple of days and spent some time on the boat. And this is their dog, Winston. A sweet dog, and um, it's a Portuguese water dog. So I think one of our presidents had a dog like this. I can't remember which one. Somebody might remember. And this is me and some of my friends that went with us on the boat, getting ready to go out for a trip on the lake. Spent a lot of time on the lake because even though it was January in Richmond, California is about 70 to 80 degrees in that time of the year. And it was beautiful. Yeah. So here they are. They spent a lot of time entertaining us, preparing things that we might want to drink, and preparing things that we might want to eat. They were very good cooks. So we spent a lot of time doing that. Mm -hmm. 
There we are relaxing at the end of a long, long, long day. Uh -huh. So I wanted to show you a better picture of the lake. You can see how large the lake itself is, and it's got a lot of um, different uh -huh. ports along the edge of the lake, but it's, it's a beautiful lake. And some of the history of the lake, it's um, 68 square miles. The surface area, it's the largest natural freshwater lake wholly within one state in the United States. And at 2.5 million years, it's the oldest lake in North America. So it's used a lot. A lot of people do a lot of things on the lake and um, spend a lot of time recreational activities. So we didn't, by no means did we get to all of the lake, but we spent a lot of time on different parts of the lake. So our time there was divided up into time spent at their home. And then of course we did some excursions, as I said. The first one we did was to Napa country. Napa Valley is a part of North Carolina. It's the blue line. We traveled to, um, that was about an hour drive from clear in the lake. So yeah. the first one we went to was um, a beautiful one. This is the Robert Mondavi Vineyard and um, pretty much Napa Valley has a main road that runs right through the middle of it and the winery is on both sides. This is the road right here that I'm pointing to and you can see that it's got uh, quite an extensive operation here for this winery. Some of the wineries we visited were small. Some of them, this was probably the biggest one that we visited. We did visit a lot of different ones, but I'm only going to highlight three of them because it's pretty, it's pretty hard to show you everyone. So this is going to be just about six of them. Excuse me, three of them. So this is the entrance. At the entrance, you can see has some really nice statues here, nice fountain, and there are the, some of the vineyards right over to the side where they actually grew the grapes. Matthew. Look around in the parking lot, you can see the beautiful mountains, really lovely weather and just beautiful, beautiful countryside. So back to the entrance. So we went in through here and of course we're at a winery so we're going to do a little bit of wine tasting. And this is tasting some of the wine. And this is the actual one of the wine tasting rooms. They had quite a few. Um, this is not the only one. And you can see the Christmas decorations are still up. It was January and uh, they had not taken those down yet. So really nice areas where they uh, gave people the opportunity to taste the wines. So the next winery we went to was one of my favorites. It was called V. Satui. And it is um, one that's won a lot of awards as you can see, there's a whole lot of wineries up and down the road, but this one was by far one of the nicer ones, just like Robert Mondavi. It was not quite as big. Oh, great, wasn't it? Nope. Nope. All right. All right. So this is the courtyard in the Vista oh, Chile yeah. area where, um, there are a lot of things going on in the courtyard, but the nicest part about it was the relaxed atmosphere. You could explore, walk wherever you wanted to. They had areas where they had um, demonstrations going on. And once again, beautiful area, really nice day for um, a visit like that. Mm -hmm. So of course we tasted some wine here. And this was the wine tasting in a gift shop. And we spent some time in the gift shop uh, purchasing some things. And, you know, the nice thing was you could actually just buy some uh, cheese and crackers and 
have some wine and go sit on the picnic tables. This is a sign that shows where they won Winery of the Year um, for wow. Napa Valley seven times in the last decade. So during, from 2000 to 2010, they won it uh, seven years out of those 10 years. Good and here are the picnic tables where we got some uh, food and we went over here and just sat and enjoyed um, wow. being able to relax. And the third one I'm going to show you, this is the last one. Um, wasn't the last one we went to, but just because I can't show you all of them, I'm going to show you this one and then we'll go on to something else. <sighs> But this is uh, Mum Napa, and it was not wine. It was actually champagne. And you may have heard of this type of champagne before because it is very popular. It's not the most expensive champagne, but it's not an inexpensive <laughs> brand either. Yeah. So this was a nice winery. Um, they, they called it a winery, even though it's really um, cham mainly champagne. So now? So they had, uh, once again, a beautiful setting right off the main road. Mm -hmm. You can well, see yeah. this area over here. It was really nice. Also, we did, I took some pictures here as well. This was the tasting area where you could sit, and they had these um, puffs of air. It looks like coming out around here, around the edge. That's actually mm -hmm. cool water. It was to keep it from being too hot. Uh, while you sat and enjoyed the champagne. Oh. And there we are tasting some wine, tasting some champagne. Excuse me, I keep saying wine when I mean to say champagne. Champagne. <laughs> Getting some samples of different champagnes. This is what it looks like if you want to look for it in the store. <coughs> champagne. Yep. So, at the end of a long day of a lot of wine tasting, we head back home. Back home to Clear Lake. Mm -hmm. And we rested for a few days because the next uh, excursion was gonna be the Red Line. And that's when we're gonna go from Clear Lake to San Francisco. So that was a little bit longer than getting from Clear Lake to Napa Valley. That was about a two hour trip. Wow. So we left really early. Yeah, you can see the distance is a little bit more to San Francisco area down here. Mm -hmm. It's also kind of a, a rough trip because it did not have like a direct interstate we had to do a lot of mountain, that's what I call it, mountain driving, where we were going around twists and turns, and uh, we made a couple of stops so we wouldn't get car sick. It was easy to get car sick on those mountains. Yeah, I know, I've been there, I've done it. Yeah, the first, the first thing I'm gonna show you is not necessarily a stop we made, but the reason I included it was because as we were, um, as we were coming in to the area of San Francisco, there was a, this big area that was noticeable right over off the road to our left. And of course, we all wanted to know what it was. And our host, the person that was driving said, well, that's San Quentin Prison. So most of you have probably heard of San Quentin. It's a pretty famous prison, um, an active prison still. And the most famous person there was Charles Manson. He was there for many, many years. If you remember the story, 1969, the murders of Sharon Tate and her friends. And um, yep. it was his group that went in and um, murdered them. And he died recently. I think it was 2018 or maybe 2017 that he died while he was still in prison. Every, t every time he came up for parole, he was denied. So, yeah, one other famous inmate that was there was Merle Haggard, the famous country mm -hmm. singer. Um, 
He also uh, spent time in Folsom Prison, but he was also in San Quentin. So as we went into um, San Francisco, obviously you can see it's just a lot of things to see there and a lot of places to go. We only wanted to spend um, one day there. So we left uh, Clear Lake pretty early and we, um, you can tell me I'm running out of time. Only been doing this 15 minutes. So I hope it's not gonna run out of time. But anyway, um, well, it's saying it's only nine minutes left. I'm not sure why. I'm gonna pick up the pace just a little bit. Um, we we'll a little bit and then go back and see how Maybe it's because we logged some of you guys on. Yeah, and I'll let you get on a little early. That must be why. Sorry, I didn't realize that. I thought it would start timing it from when the host got on. Yeah, because that was on news. Okay, so the first place we went when we got to San Francisco was the Haight-Ashbury District. Which if you are in the age group, sort of like me, anywhere over 50, I'm sure you remember the 1967 Summer of Love, which is um, yeah. they had uh, a lot of hippies and people that um, did drugs and things like that living there at the time. A lot of graffiti, it still remains there. These are pictures I actually took while I was there. And um, it was very, very interesting to see that kind of uh, graffiti. And we also rode by this. Another reason San Francisco is famous is for the Grateful Dead house. The Grateful Dead actually got their start here in 1965, Jerry Garcia. Oh, God. Yeah, we also went to um, Lombard Street. And the only thing Lombard Street is famous for is it's um, a series of eight hairpin turns that when people go to San Francisco, I took these pictures. When people go to San Francisco, they actually drive that so they can see what it feels like. And this is not a picture I took. It was one I found online. But it shows cars going, constant stream of cars going down there. Just so they can see what it feels like. We also went to Fisherman's Wharf. Wow. And Fisherman's Wharf is famous for obviously lots of food. Uh, a lot of uh, fish sellers sell their wares here and um, they're, it's pretty good. We actually stopped in one of the places here and had, oh, sorry, this is AT&T Park, which is now called Oracle Park. It was um, where the San Francisco Giants play. And this is a statue of Willie Mays. He was one of the most famous people that played for the San Francisco Giants. So they have a statue of him there. And another thing that was near Fisherman's Wharf was the Ghirardelli Square, which is chocolate. Who doesn't like chocolate, right? Uh, I do. I love chocolate. Yeah, I uh, really like chocolate. I don't and chocolate. we certainly sat down and ate some chocolate and had that nice view in the back of it. Yeah. The other thing we did that was really entertaining while we were there is um, something called Ride the Ducks. It was so much fun. This. San Francisco doesn't do it any longer, but many cities that are in states along the water have this ride the duck. And what you do is you get in it on land and then the vehicle actually goes into the water and takes you on a tour of the city through the water. And this picture I took mainly because that's a ship from Norfolk, Virginia that was actually in California, in San Francisco. Pretty interesting. And you could see the AT&T park from the uh, duck boat. And you could also see a lot of the piers yep. that are in San Francisco. I know I'm going kind of fast, guys, but we only have five minutes left. So I want to get these last couple pictures in. The Golden Gate Bridge is the most spectacular sight yeah. in San Francisco. Yep. And I took a lot of pictures. This picture I actually took while we were in the duck boat. 
and there, and some of these others are from the scenic viewpoint. San Francisco is kind of known for its change in weather. When we got there, it was probably 80 some degrees and we took these pictures, it had gone down to 60 degrees. It changes weather really, really quickly. Another famous part of San Francisco, of course, is Alcatraz. That is a prison that closed in 1963. And obviously it had a lot of famous people that lived there. Al Capone was one, Machine Gun Kelly was another. And you can take a tour of Alcatraz. We did not do that because you have to get tickets pretty far in advance. And we had not called ahead to get tickets. So we were not able to see it. Well worth the money though. We also went to one of the best lookout spots in San Francisco. It's called uh, Bernal Heights. And then they have one called Twin Peaks. All of these are pictures I took. So we visited, um, we visited the uh, site so that we, just so we could take pictures. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, yeah, that is beautiful. Yeah, I'd love to go back to San Francisco. Okay, I'm almost to the end, guys. I think I'm going to make it. Okay, so back home to Clear Lake. And then we spent a couple of days resting before we made the trip from Clear Lake to Reno. Uh, Reno. Oh, sorry. I don't want to forget these pictures because the scenery was beautiful. This was Interstate 80. That is pretty much a direct route that goes from uh, Clear Lake pretty much all the way to Reno. We went through the Donner Pass area. And if you're familiar with that story, that's um, a story of cannibalism where people were traveling together. It was in the late 1800s or mid 1800s. They were going from Illinois to live in California. And um, they encountered some bad weather in the Sierra Nevada mountains, which you can see are right here, sort of where they would be crossing. And um, they encountered snow and they got kind of uh, a lot of people died, and so the people that remained and were living actually um, ate the people that had died. So, kind of a gross story. Um, I think I had saved information about that. This is a Wikipedia website I'll share with you about the Donner Party timeline. I'll send that in an email so you can kind of see. It, it was supposed to take them, um, sorry, it was supposed to take them, whoops, one too fast. Thank you. Sorry. It was supposed to take them uh, four months to get there, and it ended up taking them almost a year. So, so we're on to the last thing, which was the Reno, Nevada segment of it. And it's called the biggest little city in the world. It's pretty much a lot like Las Vegas. Here's Winston enjoying the ride in the RV. And there's our hostess enjoying her ride in the RV as well. Whoa. Winston taking a nap. <laughs> and that's a picture of the RV. I guess it's kind of hard to see, but it was pretty nice. Pretty nice RV. Nice. We spent some time once we got there, you know, we found a campsite spend some time uh, resting. And then the last spot was Lake Tahoe. And I think I have a minute left. Lake Tahoe is beautiful. These are pictures of Lake Tahoe. It's gorgeous. It's pretty. And I made it to the end, guys. We traveled back to Clear Lake in the RV. Spent another day there, then went to Sacramento for the flight to Richmond. It was a memorable trip. Really memorable.
Yes. You guys enjoy that? Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for participating. I'm sorry about the time frame. Next time I won't sign you on so quick. <laughs> and I, I did record it. I'm going to save it and um, share it with you. Thanks, Deborah. Thanks, Deborah. Yeah, glad you guys could be involved. Um,